Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and with me is Matt Doyle. Hello. From the fantastic new revival of Company on Broadway. And obviously, we're this revival is uh, switching the genders of many of the, the characters here. And I have to dive right into getting married today because <laughs> you are Jamie, formerly yes. Amy, uh, which we know before, but um, I just feel like like most gay boys in theater, I sing this song to myself quite often, pretending yeah. what it would be like to be Amy, but you get to do it. I actually uh, get to do you it. You get yeah. to do it for all of us. <laughs> so um, what what was the key to you to getting out all of these fast lyrics? How did you lock into that? Oh, the best thing for me was how Marianne's really locked into the direction of this. Oftentimes I've seen the song done and, and it's just as appropriate, but I've seen it done as this like one stream of thought and kind of this locked eyed vision, you know? And uh, Marianne was so, so keen on making sure that every single thought had a specific moment. And it was definitely a challenge at first to make sure that because it goes by so so quickly uh but it also really helped in terms of uh the memorization and in terms of tripping less and you give everything that much weight and specificity and that much care you're definitely uh gonna have an easier time with the lyrics overall uh and then the speed uh, sondheim's always said this but the speed helps it really does mm. the slower it is the, the more bound to tripping you are and uh and I often find that every now and then we'll we'll add another beat and 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 bring it up just one beat faster in the production just because I'm like I, I'm getting too comfortable at this speed I want it I want it to drive a little quicker. <laughs> and the, I mean the song seems it's hard enough it's like the uh, crazy tongue twister right um, and so complex but then in this production there is so much uh, highly choreographed yeah. business going on stage. Was yes. that difficult to layer on top of it? It feels like, you know, did you finally learn the song and then have to put all of these things? It feels like one hurdle after another. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's the one thing that, you know, this staging is so, so brilliant and I won't spoil anything, but there are so many surprises within the staging of this song and it's a blessing and it's a curse. It's a blessing because it's such a gift to take on this brilliant staging by Marianne and uh, and get to work with this set that Bunny Christie's put together with so many in intricate surprises uh, hidden in it. Uh, but it's also a curse because I mean, not only do I have to deliver the most difficult piece that Sondheim's ever written, but I also am running around the stage and uh, throwing myself into the set. And I mean, basically doing cartwheels and flips and trying to keep my breast support and land every single moment and joke. So it was like training for a sporting event in a lot of ways. I had to learn the song first and really make sure that each thought was layered in there and that I had that base of my training in there so that I could trust that it was there and uh and then slowly layering in more and more physicality even through you know previews especially from 2020 to 2022 we brought so much more uh hard uh physicality into that and making sure that we really brought more of the comedy in you know it was words first and then bringing in some of the uh, absurd physical comedy that's there now yeah so is there room for you like does it feel like you can mix it up or do any or is it really set it does now. It's really set, I will say, like, especially for for each, you know, person that's worked on this song, my covers included, I, you know, I know that we've all really found our arc. And, and that's something that I worked on so, so hard with with Marianne, making sure that we really found all the intricacies that I wanted to be there every single night, eight times a week. But now it's expanding. And now that I've found the comfort in that, I'm a, I'm playing a little bit more and I find, you know, new moments within uh, the 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 speed of the song. And sometimes they fly by, but I'll I'll notice that, oh, I can I can plug that in there or maybe I can uh, uh, grab the priest there or react to her this way. And, and that's been really fun lately is just kind of now that it's so ingrained in my body, exploring it a little bit more. Yeah. And um, with Marion Elliott, who you mentioned before, you've worked yes. with her previously Yeah, uh, with Warhorse. So was this a part that, you know, you came to her or did she already have you in mind for it? She did not have me in mind for it. In fact, she uh, she hadn't called me in for anything and we were good friends after War Horse. So I was like, OK, well, you know, Marianne knows me, so I guess that's OK. I won't say anything. I don't want to push her. <laughs> and uh, finally, she was doing final callbacks uh, for the show and I heard uh, from her and she wanted me to come in for Paul. 
And I was like, I am, I am not a Paul. Literally in the last production I did with her, I, I had PTSD and I was shaking on stage and screaming on a horse. And I've always had mental breakdowns in front of Marianne. So I was shocked that she wanted me to come in for Paul. And I was like, I, I wrote her an email and I said, you know that I have an anxiety disorder. You know, like who I am. I really don't think I'm Paul. I, I don't think that you're going to cast me as Jamie, but I just don't want to waste anyone's time. And she said, no, no, you're a Paul. Come in for Paul. And I was like, all right. So I learned uh, Paul's music and I came in for that. And I am one of the few gay boys that didn't have Getting Married Today memorized and like <laughs> in the back of my sleeve, you know, just ready to pull out um, in my back pocket. But uh, I, so I went in and I started singing, today is for Jamie. And she stopped me in the middle of the phrase and just said, oh God, you're right, you are a Jamie. And she said, can you do Getting Married Today? And I was like, well, I haven't, learned it and she was like oh just learn the first verse and she sent me over to the piano and I learned the first verse there and then she said great 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 we'll bring you back and I assumed that that was going to be like next week but she gave me 24 hours to learn the song and come back in the next day and and be off book with all of the material so I went home and cried <laughs> <laughs> Well, it must have worked because here you yes, are. So. Yes, it paid off congrats. luckily. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, well, you mentioned, uh, is there, he's obviously very anxiety ridden. He lets yeah. it get the best of him, certainly. Are there ways that you can relate to that and, oh. and dig into your own things for the character? Absolutely. I think that's been the most thrilling part about playing this character. Every now and then for an actor, this role kind of comes along that you feel so connected to and it is everything that you are everything that you want to deliver on stage and that's what i really feel uh with jamie um i was diagnosed with a uh, terrible anxiety disorder and a panic disorder when i was like 13 years old and it was so wonderful to have that diagnosis as a kid because for the longest time growing up when i was a child i was really confused by what was happening to me why i worried so much why i had that this horrible feeling of panic all the time and and what those episodes were and my parents didn't really understand it either so it was something uh really, it was a relief to have that diagnosis. And it's been something that I've dealt with my whole life. And to kind of take all of that, especially all of the anxieties of, you know, growing up with a conservative father and growing up gay and, and putting it all into this character, there's so much to draw from. And I've always said that Getting Married Today is the best written panic attack ever, period. In music, on, you know, text, text wise, like it is just brilliant the way it builds the way it starts with not such rational thinking and then ends with highly irrational thinking and this big climax and cacophony of sound it's it's thrilling and it's really relatable and human and i think that especially right now given all the circumstances with everyone feeling uh anxiety a lot of people who have not felt anxiety before with everything going on in our world right now i think the audience uh has a bit of a a release with me every night while I, I have that breakdown in front of them. Yeah, uh, certainly relevant at the moment. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of that kind of relevance, the pandemic sort of obviously shut down Broadway for a very long time. Uh, yeah. And company had, you'd started previews. Yeah. When the, when Broadway had to shut down. What is it like? Uh, it was roughly a year and a half uh, away what is it like coming back into a rehearsal room, back into production? Does it feel like you have to start over again? Does it, everything stay in your body? Yeah, I mean, it felt like starting over again completely. A few things really surprised us. We all knew company and we thought we had all forgotten that because it's really intricate choreography inside of a box where we're all on top of each other. And that was actually a really emotional day because it was hard watching that time pass and knowing that you were forgetting everything that you would work so hard on. And uh, I think that was a part of the grief and the heartbreak was there was probably around like the six month period where we knew, okay, there's no just jumping back into this with a, a couple weeks of refreshing this. Now it's officially, we have to start from the beginning because it's not in any of our bodies anymore and we've all forgotten it. But I remember a bunch of people crying the day that we were going over company because we remembered so much of it. And that was just, it was, it was such a hopeful moment that this was going to be okay, that, that we hadn't lost it, that uh, it, we, we were going to be able to get this up quicker and better than before. And we weren't just starting from scratch, which was a, a really exciting moment as well. But it was, 
you know, it was pretty traumatic 18 months there as we were waiting to come back. And I think in the, a strange way, it was probably the most beneficial thing to this production because we all grew in our characters so much with that second process. It was almost like we did an out of town run and then brought it to Broadway. Um, and our relationships with one another grew so much in that time. I mean, we, we all talked to each other the entire uh, time off and had Zooms together and cried together and formed friendships that weren't necessarily there before. I mean, I have to be best friends with Katrina on stage. And that was something that we created before. And now we have a deep, deep, profound relationship and, and friendship and one that we are absolutely able to bring to the stage without having to create. It's uh, mm -hmm. a connection that is much more like a rep company than just uh, going into rehearsals with people you've never met. And I feel like after the pandemic, I, it felt like because company is such a New York story. Yeah. And I, at least in my circles, that was it was the production that we all felt like, oh, when Broadway is back, like, I want that. I want yeah. New York. Yeah. What has the audience response been like for you? I, I cannot get over the audience response. I, I, and Patty mentioned this the other day, too. She was like, I cannot believe it was mid-February, actually, when she said this. She said, I cannot believe that they're still reacting this way. She was like, it's Stephen Sondheim, it's company. I, I, don't, I don't understand. You'd think that we were at a rock concert. I mean, it really feels like that every night. The cheers just when the, the, the scrim that says company on it goes up and, and Katrina walks out, it's, it's overwhelming. And I don't think I, I can remember a show that got that kind of a response, especially before we even started to do anything. I think people are so hungry to have live theater again and to have this experience again. And they, I know so many fans of this show and of this production have waited so long to see it and have it back that there's always more than a few people out there that are, are ecstatic to be there. And I, I, I've been so grateful for the crowds that we've had because it's, I, I, you know, I've, I've done musical comedy before I was in Book of Mormon, but I never experienced uh, reactions like this before. Yeah. Um, I did also want to ask, uh, beyond company, you have released a few albums of your yeah. own. Um, you are a staple of my house during Christmas time because oh I'm obsessed God. with the, the Whiskey Five album. <laughs> thank um, you. So that's played on repeat every Christmas. Um, oh my God! Thank you. Is that still an avenue you are looking to like pursue? Is is that absolutely down yeah. the road? You know, we wanted to do it in 2020 uh, when I was doing company this last time because a lot of it is contingent on having the funds and everything and, and mm -hmm. being employed and able to do it. Um, and we were just about to do it and the pandemic happened. So everyone's kind of getting themselves together, but I have written some new music and I've been with my writing partner, Will Van Dyke, for a long time. And uh, I know it's something that we're really, really, really hopeful to put together within the next year or so and just uh, release something very, very different, which I think uh, will be more along the lines of uh, real 80s inspired music, which is kind of what navigated my life growing up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 80s is, is exciting. Yes. I'll be looking forward to that. Yes. Um, well, you know, before we finish up, I want to make sure I ask, uh, because we sadly lost Stephen Sondheim yeah. uh, this year, and I know he was very involved, actually, in this production. Um, and I would just love to hear a little bit about what what that was like, if you can describe like a favorite, uh, you know, moment he gave or a, a favorite note he gave you yeah. during the show. Oh, so many. Um, I mean, that's been the most profound part of this experience was, was working with him, obviously, but also not being able to open on his 90th birthday was so heartbreaking. And then coming back and losing him so quickly was just this uh, unbelievable blow. But I feel so fortunate to have witnessed his spirit, especially in his later years, because I was always so fascinated by how much he wanted his work to grow. Even, you know, even in his last moments, he was still creating and he still wanted to see his work uh, reinvented for a new audience. I also did the Sweeney Todd off Broadway at the Barrow Street Theater, and he loved that production so much. And it was as absurd as you could possibly get in terms of reinvention. And he was such a fan of it and so, so behind it. And I always really appreciated that about him. He, he had such a love for his collaborators. 
he would talk about George Firth with so much emotion and would cry every time he brought him up and say, I just wish he could, could see what his, his work has become. And uh, he was just a very, very passionate, um, passionate creator. He wanted to give us notes. He wanted to be in the room with us. He wanted to be involved. And he was really um, in love with the line, I'm the next bride. And he brought it up with me uh, daily in the first round of previews and just said, you're not doing it right yet. You're not doing it right yet. I was doing it in a really like quiet, introspective way and then running off tearfully. And he was like, no, no, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. And he used to say, it's the best exit line ever written. You need to scream it, scream it up to the rafters. And I was like, all right. And so I'd say to Marianne, do you really think I should do that? And she was like, just do what you want. It's okay. And I was, I finally, finally did it for him on our first preview back. And I knew that I needed to do it when we came back. I was like, okay, I'm going to scream that line. He was right. I know he was right. And he came up to me at the end of the show and he was crying when he was talking about it. And he was like, that's it. That's the line. And he was like, and especially coming from the perspective of a gay man now, how, how emotional that is. It's the best line. And you need to always, always say it like that. And that was one of the last conversations I had with him. So I certainly think of him every single night that I say that line and I'm, uh, I'm yelling it up to him all the time. <laughs> Well, with a with a perfect exit line, we will leave it there. Thank you so much, Matt. <laughs> uh, it's you. a fabulous work in, in this show. And anyone who's out there watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby and make sure to follow, follow us throughout this Broadway season. Matt, thanks again for talking with me. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.